How's it going everyone? Today's video is a video that I've been very excited to make and that is because it's going to be part one of the K-series swap for my FRS. So like I've said in the past, I'm gonna to try to document this K-series swap as much as I can as well as the rationale behind some of the decisions and the parts that I buy so that if any of you are considering doing a K-swap for your FRS BR086, you guys can take into consideration my choices and follow along if you'd like. So today's video is going to be discussing the transmission options for the K24 swap into the FRS BR086. Um, ever since I announced that I was going to be doing this swap, this is probably the number one question that I've gotten, which is what transmission are you going to run? So today I wanted to discuss some of the options that are out there and give you guys the pluses and minuses of each option so that you guys can consider this if you're going to do the swap yourself. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to note all of the different transmission options that are available for the K-Series swap because there are a lot of different transmissions that have been paired up to the K-Series in the past. So today I'm going to go over the ones that I'm more familiar with and I think the ones that are going to be more common for this swap so you guys can consider the ones that are really the top contenders. So I'm going to start it off simple and that's going to be with the stock FRS transmission. Now there are a lot of pluses and minuses when it comes to using the stock transmission for your K-series swap. Uh, the number one plus is probably going to be the fact that if you're planning on doing the swap you probably already have a stock transmission to use anyway. So if you already have that transmission it may be very enticing to just stick with it and make that work on the K-series swap. And thankfully K-Power and their K-series swap kit for the FRS BR086 is going to utilize the stock transmission. So you'll already have essentially a plug and play kit for the the stock transmission to use, uh, so that is going to be a very big plus. In addition to that, the stock transmission is also pretty cheap. You can find used ones ranging from $200 to $1,000, and to get a new one, it's about $2,000. It's also pretty light, weighing in at about 90 pounds, so if you're trying to reduce the weight as much as you can, using the stock transmission is a pretty good option. Now, there is one very big downside to the stock transmission, and that is the fact that it is pretty weak. So if you plan on building a pretty high horsepower, naturally aspirated K24 build, or turbocharging your K24, you may want to consider using a different transmission because the stock transmission is might not hold up in those higher horsepower ranges. But if you're planning on sticking in the lower horsepower ranges, like the 200 to 220 wheel horsepower range, or maybe even up to 240, you really won't have that many issues with the stock transmission, but if you go any higher than that, you may start running into issues. So it may be worthwhile to consider swapping in a different transmission when you're doing the swap. Now, before I get to the second transmission, I do wanna do like an honorable mention, quick note for a transmission option that some of you may have considered, but actually is not going to work out in the long run, or at least without some minor uh, to major fabrication. So that is utilizing the Mazworks CD09 transmission for the swap kit and then using K-Power swap kit for the uh, stock FRS transmission, but using the Mazworks CD09 transmission, which is meant to fit onto the stock motor. If that didn't make sense to you, essentially the idea is this Mazworks CD09 swap is meant to go onto the stock FA20, um, and it's just a direct replacement for the uh, FRS transmission. So it seems like it would be logical that you could use that and then use the K-Power swap kit to run a CD09 transmission that is pretending to be the stock transmission, if that makes sense, but it actually would not work out. And the reason for that is because the K-Power swap kit is expecting the stock transmission to have stock mounting points and also to have the stock shifter so that they can relocate the shifter using a, a modified shifter and then use a new uh, mount system. But the Mazwork swap kit actually has a different shifter and different mounting points than the stock FRS transmission, so it wouldn't work out in the long run. So if you are trying to use the Mazworks, CD09 swap into the K-powered swap, uh, you're going to need a new drive shaft, new mounts, and possibly even a new shifter. All right, moving on to the second transmission option, and this one is probably going to be very common. That is the S2000 transmission. Now, the reason this transmission option might be pretty common is because it is also a good option for a lightweight transmission option that also already has a uh, mounting plate for the K24. Generally, when people do rear-wheel drive K24 swaps, they use the S2000 transmission, um, so it's very common to see adapter kits to put the S2000 transmission onto the K24. In addition, to that, it is stronger than the FRS transmission and has been proven to hold up to around 400 to 450 wheel horsepower, which the majority of builds out there are really not going to exceed those numbers, so it will be pretty reliable if that's the range that you plan on keeping your car in. Now, the S2000 transmission is a little bit heavier than the stock FRS transmission, weighing in at about 100 pounds, and it's also a bit more expensive than the FRS transmission because it is harder to come by. So the used ones you're going to see are around $500 to $1,000. Long story short, the S2000 transmission is going to be stronger, but also more expensive and harder to come by, so it's just uh, something that you should consider. Pure Automotive currently makes motor mounts for the uh, K24 swap into the FRS, and they also make the uh, transmission mounts with a shifter relocation kit. So there already is a 
plug and play kit out there if you plan on using the S2000 transmission, but it means you're going to have to use pure automotive uh, motor mounts as well as a transmission mount to make the entire system work out. Now the next option is the option that I'm actually planning on going with, and that is a standard Nissan CD009 transmission. So this transmission is one of the most commonly used transmissions when it comes to more high horsepower builds, like a lot of 2JZs use the CD09 uh, because it can handle a lot of power in the 700 to 800 horsepower range. The downside to that is that it is heavier. The CD09 weighs in at about 130 pounds and it's also more expensive because it is more sought after than the other transmissions. So to buy one used, you're looking at about $800 to $1,200. New though, you can get one for $1,800 and that is not a bad option if you're spending a lot of money on the swap and you don't want to deal with reliability issues on a used motor, you can get a new one for about $1,800, which is pretty nice. Now one of the other benefits of the CD09 that I've been able to deduce is that the shifter may actually line up into the FRS very easily with minor to no modifications. Now the reason for that is the K power swapped K24 into the FRS B086 moves the uh, engine about four inches backwards. However, the CD09's transmission has the shifter about a couple inches forwards than the FRS transmission. So in my calculations, it seems like the shifter will line up actually pretty well for the OEM shifter position and may require little to no modification uh, to get the shifter to be in the correct location. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to give you guys more information as I put this swap together, but in my head, it does seem like the shifter should line up pretty well. So that would be a nice perk about the CD09 as well. The main reason that I'm choosing the CD09 over the other options is because down the road, I do intend on making more horsepower, like in the 400 to 500 range, and I do want a reliable transmission that can keep up with that. So I'm just going to cut to the chase now and switch in that reliable transmission so I don't have to worry about it down the road. So I'm going to use the CD09 transmission to make sure that it can hold the power. Now moving on to the next transmission option, and this one is actually a pretty exciting option, one that I don't think a lot of people have considered, but it's definitely worth considering. And that is to use one of the Getrag dual clutch transmissions out of a M4 and give your K24 swap dual clutch uh, transmission. So, I mean, I just think that that's an awesome option. Companies are already coming out with adapter plates to put uh, the Getrag dual clutch transmission onto the K24. So you can basically just utilize those kits as long as your ECU is capable of handling the brain power that it takes to run a dual clutch transmission. But you can get really quick shifts on that car and also you can have an automatic transmission. So if this is gonna be your daily driver, that's definitely worth considering. But it could be faster than the manual transmissions because dual clutches shift so quickly. So it's definitely worth considering if you're trying to build a time attack build or just trying to have a really fast car. The only downside to this transmission is that it weighs about 175 pounds. So compared to the 90 pound FRS transmission or the 100 pound S2000 transmission, that is about 75 pound difference, which is significant when you're trying to build a lightweight car. In addition to that, the transmission is the most expensive of the ones that I've named so far. It costs about $2,000 to $3,000 to get it used, but the M4 comes from the factory with around like 500-ish horsepower or something like that. So it means that you're already gonna have a transmission that's built to handle that high level of horsepower. So you hopefully won't need to replace that transmission because it most likely won't break since it's already intended for pretty high horsepower cars. Now, the last transmission option that I'm gonna suggest is for anybody out there who has basically more money than they know what to do with, and that is to go with a sequential transmission. Now, the specific sequential transmission that I'm going to name on this lift is the Quayife, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the Quayife 350Z transmission. It costs about $12,000, so like I said, this is not, I think, for the average uh, trying to keep the budget down enthusiast, but if you have a lot of money and you're trying to build a fast car, sequential transmissions sound awesome, they shift insanely quickly, and they're just super cool. The reason that I say the Quayife 350Z transmission is because there's already a 350Z adapter plate out for the K24, meaning it, it's for the CD09 transmission that I mentioned earlier, and in addition to that, the shifter should line up very close to the OEM shifter position, like I stated earlier with the CD09. So unless you'd consider building a uh, custom sequential transmission that you can tell them exactly where you want the shifter to be and all that kind of stuff, if you're trying to look for an off-the-shelf option, the Quayife 350Z sequential transmission should be the best fit for this swap kit into this car. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you guys can message me on my Instagram at narrowman 98 and I would be happy to discuss the transmission options out there or answer any questions that you guys have. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you guys like it and subscribe. Um, I will be doing a lot more videos on the K-Swap as the parts start to come together and as I start this swap, and I want to provide you guys with as much information as I can if you're considering doing this swap as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one.